Hey everybody, my name's Azalea and you're watching my YouTube channel, Way Crunchy. Today, I'm gonna go through everything that I read in 2021. So a little recap before we ring in 2022. Um, I am a huge reader. I am evangelical about reading. If there is one thing you could do to improve your mind, improve your life, and to keep growing as a human being, it would be read books, read books, read books. You know, fiction, nonfiction, either way, you're going to learn. Your brain is going to stay sharp. You need to keep growing as a human being. And I can't imagine being able to keep growing without reading books. So if there is something that you need to improve about yourself in 2022, if you are not a reader, become a reader. Start with little books, then go to big books because you'll build steam. Okay, so read books. It's important. Read books to your children. Have your children read books. You read books. Read books. Books. I cannot express enough. I've been this way since I was a, I can't remember a time I wasn't reading, you know. I had my nose in a book as a teenager, as a young child, you know, just packing away these novels. But, I, you know, eventually I did go to college, Virginia Commonwealth University, and I was an English major. I also wrote my own book this year, Memoir of Millennial Motherhood, which is available on Amazon. Kindle, if you have Kindle Unlimited, Memoir of Millennial Motherhood is on there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell y'all every book that I read. Now, I read this as a mother, reading is a struggle. Having, you know, you get the time to read, but then maybe you don't have the headspace, the energy, the focus to read because being a mom takes up so much brain space and energy. So this year, my children are seven and nine. They're that old, seven and nine. This is the first year that I've been back up to where I was before I had children on the amount that I am reading. So when you have little children, cut yourself a break, but still you can read three or four novels a year, you know? But this year I read 31 books. Um, I've got my computer right here looking at my Goodreads. If you wanna find me on Goodreads, I am Azalea Fay. Um, so I read 6,921 pages. You know, my, um, Longest book was 528 pages. Average book length in 2021 was 216. So now I'm just going to go through chronologically and tell y'all everything I read this year. 2021. All right, here we go. Milk and Honey by Rupee Carr. That was like on my to-do list for a long time. So good. Um... The Handmaid's Tale, Margaret Atwood. That's been on my to-do list for a long time. It was good. <laughs> um, and then I read Gandhi, A Life by Yogesh Shada. That's probably not how you pronounce that name, and I apologize. But it was a biography about Gandhi from beginning to end. Detailed, thick, wordy biography of Gandhi. And... Um, very worth my time. Um, then I read The Goddess Pose by Michelle Goldberg, uh, Origin of Yoga in Our Country type situation. Um, and then I read Madame Blavatsky's Baboon, A History of the Mystics, Mediums, and Misfits Who Brought Spiritualism to America by Peter Washington which goes into a lot of the culture surrounding yogi people in this country um, and this type of a culture in the United States. Um, then I read Einstein's Dreams by Alan Lightman. It was a terrible book. It was, I wish I hadn't read that. Then I read I Know This To Be True, Greta Turnberg by Geoff Blackwell. I wanted to learn more about Greta, the little environmentalist girl, um, and I did. Let's see. 
I read The Tiger Rising by Kate D. Camillo. That was a little like youth fiction, little novel. I read The Rose and the Beast, Fairy Tales Retold. And now that is Francesca Leah Block. When I was a young 20 something, the Wheatsy Back books were my favorite books of all time. They sang to my soul. Um, I think the compilation of all the Wheatsy Back books by Francesca Leah Block were called Dangerous Angels. You know, there's Witch Baby and there's all these good books. Francesca Leah Block, the Wheatsy Back series at this point would do nothing for me. If you are in your 20s or your late teens, read the Wheatsy Back books. Anyway, I revisited Francesca Leah Block and this is just not an author I'm going to carry with me into this phase of my life. Um, that was not a very good book. Um, ooh, then I got into Lynchburg, Virginia history. So I live in Lynchburg, Virginia. I got into local history and I dove deep. That was fun because it's a very historic town, you know, Virginia, 13 original colonies. You know, we old school over here as far as settlement of this country. And it was interesting. Very, very, very interesting. It's good to have a grasp of the history you stand upon. So I read Lynchburg, The Most Interesting Spot by Dorothy T. Potter. I read Inspiration Street, Two City Blocks That Helped Change America. Yeah, to an Inspiration Street, Two City Blocks That Helped Change America. That was about a very little area in Lynchburg that was very important. Um, so that's by Daryl Laurent. Then I read Becoming Emily, The Life of Emily Dickinson. Um, just a little biography on Emily Dickinson, the poet, y'all know. And then I read Anne Spencer's uh, How Poets Sing and Die. Uh, so Anne Spencer was one of the most famous residents of the Inspiration Street that I read about in the book before. So I was reading some of her poetry, reading about her. In general, I don't really like poetry. I like fiction and nonfiction. Even though I write poetry, I don't read that much poetry. Rupi Carr, that's good. Like, my style of poetry that I write is the kind of poetry I like to read, and Rupi Carr is similar to my style. Okay, next book I read was Hindu Holiday. I like to read things that take place in India. It's just, uh, I've never been, um, and it enchants me. Um, Hindu Holiday by J.R. Ackerley. It wasn't that good, but takes place in India. Novel. Or maybe it was a memoir. Tough to say. Um, Where the Sidewalk Ends. I read it cover to cover. You know, Shel Silverstein. And reading Shel Silverstein, you know, Where the Sidewalk Ends, um, as an adult, it's different. It is different as an adult when you read Where the Sidewalk Ends, you know, because I read Shel Silverstein a lot when I was a kid. Um, so then as an adult, I read it out loud to my son so he can also have that experience. That's good. Um, I read Drawing on Walls, A Story of Keith Haring by Matthew Burgess. Um, you know, Keith Haring, inspirational artist in the 80s here in the USA. Then I read um, Margaret Atwood, the Robber Bride. So I love The Robber Bride. Um, not this year that I read it, but The Edible Woman. Some Margaret Atwood, I love. Some Margaret Atwood, I'm not really that into. <laughs> um, okay. Then I read Flora and the Tiger, 19 Very Short Stories for My Life. What? I didn't read that book. <laughs> Bravey. I didn't read that book either. Um, okay. All right. What did I read? I read Evangeline of the Bayou. So I also like anything that's like New Orleans and magic. It's a little fiction piece. Youth fiction. It's fine. Go to the youth section. They go down easy. These little youth fiction books. Some of them can be pretty good. Um, then I got The Fixer Upper. 
this whole shack, the $20,000 fixer upper that I am sharing the renovation process here on this channel. Um, so then I started reading. Um, so I read Old Home Love by Andy Meredith and Old Home Love was just about decor of old houses, like decorating. Then I read Bilbo's last song, you know, J.R. Tolkien. I had not read it. Um, anyway, Tolkien's classic. Uh, then I read If a Tree Falls, The Global Impact of Deforestation. I read that with my son. Um, obviously, we need to know about deforestation. That's a nonfiction. Uh, Homebody, A Guide to Creating Spaces You Never Want to Leave. Now, that's the Joanna Gaines fixer-upper decor education, home interior design. So, you know, fixer upper queen, Joanna Gaines, you know, it's not my style, sh style, shiplap, shiplap, you know, stone countertops, you know, that's grandiose by my standards, you know, the Gaines stuff, the fixer upper TV show. But, you know, I like to learn read books. I like to learn from different people. So did the Joanna Gaines Fixer Upper book, she's really great. She's had a lot of success with Fixer Uppers and now I'm into Fixer Uppers. So I'm going to put that book in my belly so that I can draw upon the wisdom I gain from it. Okay, so then I'll oh, handy ma'am. Home Improvement Decorating and Maintenance Tips and Projects for Your Family by Beverly DeJulio. Okay, so handy ma'am. It teaches you, you know, like basic basics of like painting, little plumbing jobs, little electricity jobs, little repair things around the house. This is like, it was dated, like I think from the 80s, um, which matters with decor. Um, and I read it. I put it in my belly. I didn't really enjoy reading it. It wasn't laid out spectacular, but you know. I need to have as much knowledge as possible because I'm new at, you know, this endeavor, this craft. Um, and so getting an introduction, you know, because we're doing the whole house, I'm managing the whole project. And so I need to know plumbing, electricity, little fixes, big fixes. I need to know the words used. I need to immerse myself in this knowledge. Okay, so then I read a really good book. It was nonfiction, but it was like creative nonfiction. Um, so I read Seed to Dust, A Gardener's Story by Mark Hammer. Seed to Dust, A Gardener's Story by Mark Hammer. That was a really good book. It was a book about a gardener. Um, I think he was over in England and it was just like, you know, his day-to-day -day observations in the garden. And it was like a big, like, kind of like formal garden. And he worked for like the lady of the house and their relationship with each other. And then his relationship with his family, with his wife, with life, with nature, with himself, with poetry. Oh, that was good. Um, Five stars, the most stars possible. Seed to dust, Mark Hammer. Uh, then I read Martha Stewart's New Old House. Martha Stewart, this was written when she was a little younger and she was fixing up her, she had had one tiny fixer upper. This was her second fixer upper and her meticulous diary of her renovation was extremely helpful to me. That is, yeah, that is good. Martha Stewart, she's a queen. Then I read The Met... <sighs> Vincent Van Gogh, He Saw the World in Vibrant Colors by Amy Googly Lamo. Googly Lamo. I'm butchering the name and I apologize. But just a Vincent Van Gogh short biography. Um, because I love art. I love artists. I love to share this type of knowledge with my son and put it in my belly. Then I read Diary of a Young Naturalist. Now that's nonfiction as well. Diary of a Young Naturalist. That was by Dara McNulty. Now I think, I want to say he's Irish, but he's kind of like Greta, you know, a kid naturalist, kid environmentalist, a kid who's making a big difference in the world. But he also talks a lot about himself and his siblings and autism and understanding people with autism um, is something that I 
want to do. I want to be able to function better with people who function differently. And um, so I, you know, I wanted to gain a little insight into what it's like to be autistic. Talks a lot about it. I learned a little bit. And then also just like his magical appreciation of nature. And he wrote this book and he's a kid and it is really good. Way better at writing than me. And I got a degree under my belt and some age on this self. Dara has it going on. Um, then up uh, Haruki Murakami. Haruki Murakami. Raise your hand if you are a Haruki Murakami fan. I he's a Japanese author and I love him. I read Kafka by the Shore, or is it Kafka on the Shore? That's the first Haruki Murakami I read. It was um given as required reading. I took a urban fantasy literature course when I was in college. And Kafka on the Shore was on there. I didn't know Murakami previously, but then I read Kafka on the Shore or by the Shore, whatever. I read it and it was real good. It was so good. So now if I don't know what to read, I'm like, oh, I'll pick up a Murakami. It's real good. I love the details. Anyway, so I read a collection of short stories by Murakami. Um, first person singular stories is what it is called. And then the last thing, the last book that I think I'm going to close down and complete in 2021, unless I finish a book tonight, which I might actually, um, the last thing I read was the Swiss Family Robinson, the original classic, um, Johann David Weiss. Uh, the Swiss Family Robinson is an extremely good book to read to children. It teaches you a lot about nature, a lot about survival, even though it is classic old literature. It teaches about having an indomitable, industrious spirit. Um, I would say if you are homeschooling, you absolutely must watch the Swiss, you must read the Swiss Family Robinson cover to cover. Either have your children read it or you read it to them. And then, you know, there's many movie versions, watch that. But then I do supplemental books and playlists on YouTube with Swiss Family Robinson. Swiss Family Robinson is a whole unit for homeschooling, really. And so the animals, the plants, the projects, then you can add in supplemental material to help engage more deeply with the story. Very good for homeschooling, very good for kids. Uh, and I like it. I read it when I was young to myself and then I knew that it was something I wanted to share with my children. So, well, those are all the books I read in 2021. What is my favorite book? Seed to Dust. Mark Hammer. Seed to Dust was the best book I read this year. Absolutely. Seed to Dust. Seed to Dust. If you love nature, if you love to garden, seeds of dust. It's good. It's well written. I love it. You know, I, and you know, I felt like I related so deeply to the whole story, you know, but it was an older, like English gardener, but, and, and you know, that's not me, <laughs> but there's the gardening spirit. There's the love of nature. There's the communication. Like I remember he was talking at one point in seeds of dust about the difference between dirty dirt and and like clean dirt, like, you know, if you get clean, good dirt on your hands, you don't have to wash your hands, but like funky dirt, you have to wash off. I was like, yeah, I get that. Uh, <laughs> Seed to Dust was so good. And then the Martha Stewart home renovation book is absolutely, if you're going to get into buying fixer uppers, or if you own a historic home, um, if you're going to get into fixing up houses, that is the book I recommend for you. All the rest can go out with the garbage, honestly, from what I've read so far. But the Martha Stewart, what was it called? Oh, I didn't, for some reason, I did not mention Heaven by Miko Kawakami, which was a Japanese author. Heaven is a novel and it is twisted and dark and emotional. And I kind of loved it, but it was kind of a lot. 
Martha Stewart's new old house. Martha Stewart's new old house is without a doubt the best book for fixing houses. Absolutely. Martha Stewart's new old house. And then Seeds Dust, Mark Hammer. Those are my favorites of this year. Love you guys. Yeah. What was your favorite thing you read this year? Please tell me. Because I've got a whole nother year and a whole life ahead of me to read, 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 read. See y'all in 2022.